All right, I think it's working. Um, hi, welcome to my very first stream. This is Reptile Dysfunction. It's going to be dedicated to making all kinds of little fun miniature scenes. Please let me know if the audio doesn't work. Um, this is my first time, I've done a couple tests and they sounded good to me and they sounded good to my friends, but I don't know if they actually sound good to you. So please let me know if they don't. Um, so here in Houston, it's been really super hot and um, it's definitely summer and very humid. And so I thought we would make a little miniature camping scene to celebrate the summer. Um, what I'm envisioning is a little tent for, if y'all don't know, here, let me switch over. Um, I have fallen in love with these little calico critters, which are just like little animals that were like really popular in the eighties and I didn't get one. So I'm reliving my childhood now. Um, so I'm going to make a little camping scene for these guys. Um, first, what I'm going to focus on today is a tent. So let me show you what I'm thinking of. So if you can envision this being like a little tent base, so for our little characters, um, a little preview of future episodes. I'm thinking we're going to do a little campfire um, out of a tea light. Um, that's a little bit of an adventure. So fun fact, I haven't done any of these specific projects before, so all of this is going to be like a total experiment and may or may not work. Um, and then the other thing that I've got is a little miniature kayak. So all of this is gonna to come together over the next couple weeks to show, or to be just like a very cute little camping scene. Um, so if you look at like my little current scene down there in the front, um, you can see that like these, these things called fairy gardens are super popular right now if you go online or go on Pinterest. Um, that one in particular is what I'm using for my inspiration for this, just a little teepee and I think it's adorable, but it's also just like literally stuck into the ground and is not going to be like permanent or able to like last that way. So what I'm going to try to do is make more of a base so that we can like have this tent be not like immediately fall down. Um, so that's the plan. Let me put this away. So for the base, what I'm thinking, this is like super cheap and tacky, but I'm thinking what I'm gonna do is just like cut apart a paper bowl and that's about the right size of what I'm envisioning for this tent. So, I'm just literally gonna like cut this thing apart and make a little circle. One thing I like about doing miniatures is you can just use like random stuff that you have around your house anyway. Um, and you don't have to do a whole lot of like buying of supplies because you already have it all anyway. So I'll cut this apart. All right. So for the tent, for theirs, they just had like a little piece of fabric draped around. It looks like just some dowels stuck in the ground. Um, I'm a little worried because mine's not going to be like beautifully lit up by the sun and like artistically lit like that, but mine's going to be too dark if I do that. Um, I had a couple different colors of fabric I was considering, and if anyone has any thoughts or preferences, let me know. So I just like went into my fabric stash and grabbed some colors that I thought were like very fun and summery. And, and then um, I happen to have a lot of these colors repeated in some of my other supplies. So kind of like a robin's egg blue, like a really pretty marigold, and then um, a green. And like I have all of this stuff in like paint colors, the same paint colors for like when we do the boat or the little kayak. And then I also have it in yarn for the um, little mat underneath the tent. I'm trying to figure out burlap. <laughs> I don't have burlap. I have these pretty colors. Um, no, I'm thinking, okay, so I'm thinking I'm going to do the blue on the outside because the yellow I think would be good for the inside to make it look like brightly lit. And the green I think will be too much. Okay, so if we do that, and then for the actual like mat for the, um, tent. I'm thinking these colors, like in a little circle. All right, that's what we're going to do. Um, 
Again, this is all 100% experimentation. <laughs> like I've done all these techniques before, but I've never done it for this particular project. This way. Okay, so to start off, so what I'm envisioning is crocheting a circle and then gluing it to the top of that, that paper bowl. And then that's what we'll stick the sticks to for the tent. So that it's like a little bit more permanent. Um, so for my crochet hook, I'm gonna use just the smallest hook I have that's still reasonable. I don't know if you care, but it's a size F, which is tiny and really not good for very much at all. Um, and so I'm gonna do a magic circle which if you are not a crocheter, the magic circle is just like an easy way to start a loop. And then I'm gonna stick this through. Okay. So there we go. So I grew up crocheting, sort of, I say that. My mom gave me crochet supplies while I was growing up. Oh, this is cotton. So cotton's a little less slippy. We'll see if this works. Um, but I was like, absolutely terrible at it. Ah, thank you. <laughs> so the magic circle here, I'll show you. So the magic circle, let me see what this. So if you do a double loop and then all you do is like reach through these two double loops and grab your end and then it just basically makes a giant knot that you can tighten when you get to it. So if you can see like the blanket in the background of my, of my room here, like I made every single one of those starts with the magic circle. So there you go. And then you can just start to crochet around and it automatically like ties that end down so it won't fall out. And so then you start to crochet. Is magic circle code for something else? Um, I don't think so. I think it's just code for somebody not being able to think of a better way to name it. I think back in the day you would start by like crocheting three and then tying it and then it just didn't tighten automatically. Versus this will like tighten. So if you want to be able to crochet a flat circle, you, there's like certain numbers of stitches you need to do. Since we're doing just a single crochet, which is really short, um, I'm going to do eight single crochets. One, two, three, four, five, and I'm going to pull my, my end through. Six, seven, eight. Okay. So then, I pull this through, and now I can start my second layer, which is just going to jump across. So I'm going to join my two stitches, and then throw this over here. And now I'm going to do a, two stitches for every single one stitch. And because this is cotton, it's a little bit tighter. There we go. So one, and two. There. So I've been like planning this scene for a while. Um, I decided I wanted to do a stream a couple months ago, and then I started immediately like saving all of my projects for when I would actually do this. And so I'm excited to finally be able to do it because I've literally had all of these supplies sitting in my house since May, and I've been like itching to work on it. So there's one, two. How long does it take to do a project like this? Um, so for this particular scene, it's probably gonna take, I'm gonna guess between like eight and 10 hours. Um, the fun thing about miniatures is that they don't take that long. So. I grew up crocheting and quilting and like those are massive projects that are going to take over your entire house and you're going to be doing them forever. Um, a miniature project you can do like just really quickly. And so in a, just a couple hours you'll have something really fun. 
um, depending on what we decide to do with this one, um, maybe we can make some like little miniature polymer clay hot dogs and that'll probably take a couple hours, but they're gonna be like super cute and adorable, so it'll be worth it. Um, and then like a, a background for the whole thing will be a couple hours probably as well. Um, let's see, one, and two. Okay, so if you're doing this like more seriously, you would want like to mark your stitches so you know where the round is because you can see as you start to move around it, it's hard sometimes to tell like where you jumped up to the second layer. Um, but with this one, it's only two more, so it's not that big a deal. And then I think we'll switch to yellow after this round, because I think that's probably enough. A, enough white, and B, enough of this cotton. The rest of the stuff's polyester. Like, I don't, there's some knitters and crocheters who like are super snobby about yarn, <laughs> and like will only buy like the finest of merino wool or whatever, and I am not that person. Like, I will just buy like pretty colors that are soft. Um, which means that I can never give those people presents because they'll just sneer at the yarn that's made out of. All right, and so now I'm gonna connect this. And so that's the beginning of our little base. Where did my circle go? Oh, I threw it away. Okay. So then what I'll do is I'll do a couple more rounds and then attach it to it. Um, and I might do it under, we'll see, we'll see what it looks like, how tacky it looks. So the fun thing about miniatures, if you're not giving them to children to play with, is that they don't have to like actually be durable. They just have to stand up long enough to like take a picture. Um, if you're planning on giving this to a kid to play with, you're probably going to want to put a little bit more effort into making it like nice. Um, so I'm going to do yellow now. Let's see. Where is the end of this yarn? I guess I could just have this end. No, it's not the end though. So, there's always two ends to a skein of yarn, if you're not like a yarn enthusiast. Um, and the one, this one's hidden. If I start on the other end, it's gonna just make the whole thing unravel. But I might have to do that and then just roll it up into a ball. So while I was working on this blanket, I started this blanket that you see in the back over like last year. And I went and spent Christmas with some of my family. And one of my cousins um, is, I think she's 12 now. She's gonna kill me for not remembering. But so I was like working on the crochet and she said, Lindsay, grab your stuff, we're going out. And I'm like, where are we going? And she's like, it's a surprise. And so she grabbed her little coloring book because she does like the adult coloring books. And she told me to grab my crochet. Am I a yarn enthusiast? I'm not a yarn enthusiast. <laughs> um, well, I'm a yarn enthusiast. I'm just not a nice yarn enthusiast because I'm not—I don't care that much. Aha! Found it. Okay, good. That was gonna be embarrassing. Um, so she tells me to grab my stuff, and we just like hop into this little go kart that was like at this place we were staying, and she drives me out to this place that's just like her favorite spot. And it's overlooking just this like beautiful field and she says all right Lindsay you're gonna crochet here and I'm gonna color and this is what we're doing and it was like super thoughtful like the sweetest thing I think I've ever had anybody do for me and she's 10 years old um, I think if all men could take some instruction from her on like planning dates they'd all be better off just saying so okay so now we're about to start the second round um, so this time I'm going to do two in a stitch and then one in a stitch. So instead of doubling up for every single stitch, it's going to space it out a little bit because if you do two and one for the whole thing, it just starts to like form this like ball shape and it doesn't lie flat and we want this to lie flat. So I'm going to stick this in here and then I'm going to trim my other yarn. And so the trick with crocheting in rounds is you want to like cover up your loose ends with your future stitches. So I am going to do a stitch. And so that's my changeover. So now I'm working in the yellow. 
and I'm going to do two stitches in this space and then one in the next. So if you can see that, now I'm going to do one. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go underneath the yarn so it's kind of trapped between what I was crocheting before and my new color. And now two. And it's pretty easy. All right. So these are like, this style of crochet is like very popular, obviously, for like granny squares, which is those like round circles that people stitch together like this. Um, my mom is not a fan of these because apparently she made one when she was like 12 and it took her like two years, which when you're 12 feels like forever. And so I didn't grow up doing this. I grew up doing just like rows and stripes, which is like very 70s now, like looking back. Um, and this was in like the 90s. So I feel like I was um, indoctrinated in an earlier era of uh, crocheting. So that's two. And now I'm going to do one. And now two. And the good thing is, because this is such a tiny hook, like there isn't a whole lot of space between my stitches. And so my paper bowl circle, oh, where'd it go? I already dropped it. Okay, I lost it. Um, won't show through. So that's one. Here's two. And then one. Alright. So you can see, like, this is starting to let, like, it'll still lay flat, even though it's, like, expanding. Your mom here and do these. We're opening up like your mom jokes, and it might be a little early for that. <laughs> um, okay, one. All right, and then two stitches in here. So, one of the things I like about miniatures is. Again, this is going to be like a really quick project, like we were saying. Um, and also with miniatures is it lets you work in a whole bunch of different media or medium. Um, so with this one, we're going to have fabric, we're going to have wood, like we'll have paint. Um, there's a lot of different things that can go into doing a miniature scene. We can do polymer clay, like whatever you want to do, you can do pretty much. All right, now I need a second stitch here. Um, and it also, you don't have to, you don't have to buy a whole, lot, a whole lot of stuff. Again, all this was like in my stash already. Um, and then you don't have to store a whole lot because I'm lucky enough that I have like a room specifically for crafting and I have a closet that I can hide all this stuff in. Um, but if you don't have that, then sometimes it's hard to like keep track of all of your craft supplies. And so I like miniatures because there isn't a whole lot you have to buy. You also don't have to buy a whole lot of it because you're only doing one tiny little seam. And one. All right. So now let me connect the, close the loop. Oh, that's super cute. Yeah, this is gonna look good. All right, where did my circle go? I lost it. Here it is. Okay. All right, so I'm thinking like, Two more, one more round of yellow and then two rounds of blue. What's the craziest thing you've made with yarn? I don't know. Like I'd like to be able to say that I crocheted a bikini because I think that was popular at one point. I did not do that. Um, I crocheted a Harry Potter scarf, is that crazy? I don't think that's crazy though. That seems like legit to me. Um, okay, I'm going to do two, and then this time I'm going to do two in one stitch, and then two single stitches, and then two. So you're basically just starting to stretch out and then like space out the double stitches in your single stitches. So that's two, and then I'll do one, and one. One, two. That's legit. Yeah, I thought so. <laughs> Um, it was a Gryffindor scarf, by the way, like, obviously. I don't know if that even needed to be said. 
Um, I also, when I lived in Colorado, I crocheted hats a lot because it was cold. Um, when you live in Houston, there's less to crochet. Like, I like to have a blanket in all the rooms, but other than that, like, I don't need to have a whole lot of stuff crocheted to keep me warm here. One, two, and then one, two. All right, and then double stitch in here. And two single stitches. And then two. Yeah. I love these colors. Okay, good. This is working out. I love this song. So I went through and found a bunch of music that was like licensed for just free usage. Crochet. <laughs> oh yeah, I did crochet that. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, so <laughs> um I like to go thrifting. And I also like to go to thrift stores. So, and that's which is good for miniatures, by the way. Um, what Poops McGee is pointing out is one time I did crochet something a little crazy, and it didn't go great. <laughs> so I found this hot water bottle at Goodwill, and I purchased it. Um, and at the time, I lived here in Houston, but it was like a really cold winter. I think it was like the winter of 2000. I think it was 2011. It was like really cold, and we had like a bunch of freeze days, and I didn't have like real heat there, and so. I was getting cold and I found a um, hot water bottle at Goodwill and crocheted a cover for it in teal and red and it was adorable and I embroidered hot stuff on it because I thought that was funny and um, at the time I had a craft blog that I posted it to and my coworker went on there and she said, Lindsay, um, I saw your hot stuff project that wasn't a hot water bottle. That's an old douchebag that you bought at Goodwill. <laughs> and you like crocheted like a blank, like a sleeve for it and like um, used it to warm your bed. And I was really mortified and went home and threw it away. I think I still have the sleeve. Actually, I could show it to you if you want. If you want to see it, I can show it to you. Um, I don't have the hot water bottle anymore for it though. <laughs> So that, I guess, is crazier than a Gryffindor scarf. One, okay, so then I'll do two stitches here. That's so gross. Here. <laughs> it was, um, it was potentially gross. It could have been a hot water bottle. We don't know. Um, it didn't come with a hose. It didn't come with any of the inserts. It didn't come with anything I would assume that a douchebag would come with if you were going to buy a douchebag at Goodwill. <laughs> oh my god. Um, thanks for reminding me. I... <laughs> um, fine, I won't show it to you. <laughs> Oh my god. So yeah, I uh, tend to get these great ideas for projects, and then some of them go great, and then some of them don't go great. So I'm hoping this one goes better than the hot water bottle hot stuff <laughs> pillowcase went. <laughs> All right, one, two, one. Um, I've also bought a lot of yarn at Goodwill, so if you are looking for cheap yarn, you can get yarn at Goodwill if you don't mind not knowing where it came from. Um, and in fact, last time I went and bought yarn at Goodwill, there was this like sweet little old lady there and invited me to like join her like stitch and bitch club, and she told me which Goodwills had the best yarn. So apparently different Goodwills get different types of donations, so if you're looking for some place to get cheap yarn, there's an option for you. Um, don't buy medical supplies there, but you could definitely buy yarn there. All right, so it's two. Now we're at the end of this round. And I'm going to finish off this loop. And then we're gonna switch over to blue. Yeah. My gosh. So my circle is pretty much the worst thing I think I've ever cut out. Hmm. Okay. 
So now let's switch over to the blue. All right, so end up, line up the ends and then go down through. And so then this time I'll do two in each stitch and then three single stitches and then two. Um, we'll see if I can keep this up while talking. All right, so there's one, two. So we've switched over to the new color. This looks really good, actually. Okay, so now we'll do three singles. One, two, three. Yeah. Do two singles. Two. So I started doing miniatures like a couple years ago. I got, if you can see, yeah. So this, I got this little calico critter house for Christmas a couple years ago because I'd always wanted one growing up. And I would always wanted like these like adorable little creatures growing up. And again, I never got them. And I think my parents probably would have given them to me if I'd asked, but for some reason I never did. I just always longed for them. And so then I started making like furniture for the house and kept like this secret blog that I didn't tell anybody about because I was super embarrassed that I was like a grown ass woman with a cat who was like making miniatures and basically playing with dogs. One, two, and then three, and then one, two. So there's a double. I can make a miniature tent, but only if I get to camp. Um, I don't think there'll be room for both of us. Sorry. Actually, I don't think there'll be room for me anyway. And then one. Two, three. So anyway, I kept this like secret blog where I was posting like all of these miniature projects I was working on and I didn't tell anybody about it because um, I was just really worried about being judged and having people make fun of me. Um, and so then I ended up reading this book by Brene Brown, if any of you have heard of her. She's this University of Houston person, person, professor, who's doing like really cool work. And so she wrote about like, oh, well, if you really want to like connect with people and feel connections with people, you need to be able to like open yourself up and make yourself more vulnerable to just be living an authentic life and forming connections with people. And so then I started to like tell people about this like secret blog I had. Um, one, two, three. And everyone, like, unanimously was super supportive and super kind about it and, like, didn't make fun of me for it. Because, of course, they were like, we know you, Lindsay. Like, you get into these, like, really crazy hobbies. Of course you would do that. Um, and so then I decided, yeah, she does. She does. Okay, so he's pointing out she's one of the most popular TED Talks. If you literally Google Brene Brown TED Talks, um, you'll find her. She's hilarious and in fact she's got a new book coming out and she's gonna go on tour later this year so if you're interested like go check her out she's doing really good work um, and I think that TED talk is on blame I might be wrong about that but it's like about like we have the tendency to want to blame our circumstances on either other people or ourselves and we can't just like accept that things happen and like you just like move on with it um, all right so one two three and then this is my double so anyway, I started to tell people about like my secret blog and then I ended up like linking it with my, like I have a real website and ended up pulling all of that old content into my new website and like came out quote unquote as a miniature enthusiast and everyone's been super nice about it and super kind. And so then that's kind of like what spurred me to decide to start like a stream because this is not a hobby that a whole lot of people do. Um, but by kind of like putting it out there, I can maybe find other people who are interested or even if they don't want to do it, they can still like find something in like the act of it. 
Alright, so here's one, two, and three. One, two, double. Okay. And Brene Brown is also like super relatable. She's very much like a real person and talks a lot about just like stuff that she's worked on in her life and things that she's run into, which I find refreshing because a lot of those like academic books are like so difficult to read and like they're not heartfelt at all. Like Brene Brown's a really great writer. One, two, three, one, two, Three, one, two. Okay, so we're wrapping up. May want to do, I think we probably want to do one more round. Argument from authority. <laughs> Are you throwing logical fallacies around here, really? <laughs> um. All right, well, don't read it if you don't want to. One, two. One, two. Three. All right. It's not very flat, is it? Um, pro tip, if you crochet something and it's not flat, you can like spray it and then put it between two heavy books. Um, I think if you read something and you find something in it, that's great. And if you read something and you don't find anything in it, you don't have to believe everything in it. One. Okay, so this time I'm going to do four stitches between. So a double stitch and then four singles. One, two, one, two, three, four, and then a double. Yeah, and I think that'll be a good size. Because again, here's what our characters look like if we're trying to make this like a reasonable size for them. Dinosaur jokes are fine enough. Thank you. Three, all right, and four. One, two, okay. One, two. So crocheting is something that's good if you're like watching TV. I'm not a huge fan of TV. Um, I tend to get just really antsy if I have to sit still for too long. And so I like to have something for like my hands to do or like my hand my like brain to otherwise focus on if I have something on. And crocheting is really good for that. Problem is Hi, thank you. Thanks for following. Um by the way I just put those Jurassic Park sound bites in yesterday. I'm glad they work. One, two, okay. And then one, two, three. Do I always stand while doing it? Um, I normally don't. Am I moving around too much? So I tend to be more high energy if I'm standing and I was worried that if I was sitting while I was doing this, I would just like be super boring and super low energy. If it's distracting though. I took a presentation skills class and the guy uh, who taught it was Scottish. And he said, like, of course he, like, records you while you're doing your presentation and, like, you're behind the podium. And he said, are you doing a jig? Like, you go back and forth. And so I know I, like, tend to shift my weight a lot. Okay, good. Um, no, the other thing is I got this, like, fancy stand-to-sit desk, and I rarely use it. And so I'm, like, trying to justify the purchase of it. Um, they sell, like, the bases, and I went and got just, like, an Ikea tabletop and attached it to the top. But the thing weighs like 375 pounds and I've moved it twice 
Like I've paid, I have not moved it twice. I've paid people to move it twice and there's certain places you're supposed to lift it. And so I like had to babysit the movers to like grab it from the base and carry it. And so like, it hasn't been super convenient owning it. It was expensive and it's difficult to transport. Um, so I was excited to have a reason to use it. One. All right, one, two, three, all right, four. Here we go. One, two. And the other thing I got, so I took this presentation skills class and I tend to talk really fast and I also tend to use the word actually. So, you know, we all have these like verbal tics, like if we're like under pressure or if we're like feeling very nervous, obviously you have words that you use to fill in the gap. So for me, it's like, like, like. At one point I had a really bad Valley Girl accent and so I would talk like this and like, like I just used the word like to let myself think. Um, I trained that out of myself, I hope for the most part. Um, one, two, three, four. And that was because, so I went to UCLA. My college roommate grew up in the San Fernando Valley and she had that accent. And I picked it up from her in about six weeks living together at the dorms. And I would call home and my family would be like, why are you talking like that? And I'm like, like what? And they're like, like that. What you just did, don't do that. Like you're still doing it, don't talk like that. Um, so I use the word actually a lot when I get nervous. And then I also talk really fast. One, two, all right. We're almost there. We have another half a round to do. Yeah, it's flattish, right? I think it's fine. I'm going with it. The only one I think so far is Google it. <laughs> um, can you plan a Valley Girl only stream? <laughs> Um, I could, if y'all want, if y'all, oh my gosh, I picked that up as soon as I moved to Houston, by the way. Like I was saying y'all a year after I moved here, I like to think it just means I like blend in very well with the locals and I'm a very good communicator with the people I'm surrounded by. Um, but, <laughs> um, if you want, I could do a Valley Girl accent stream. I could do a beach scene. Um. I got rid of, so I had that accent when I was in college, and then after I graduated, Valley Girls definitely don't say y'all. No, they don't. <laughs> Valley Girl did. Um, and I was just very concerned about people thinking I was a complete airhead. <laughs> um, and so I like ruthlessly trained that accent out of myself. Um, one, two, three, four. All right, almost there. One. And so this will be the double one because we just did four singles. Okay. And then one, two, three, four. Bye. I'm knocking the supplies over. I need to get, they sell these like yarn balls, like bowls that you can like run the yarn through so it'll hold your yarn for you without it going all over. One, two, three, four. Okay, two. One, two, one, two, all right, we're there. I'll do one more single stitch. Well, I guess two more. And then close it. Okay. So then, oh, I have like some, let me trim that. There. That was pretty good. Okay, so now we're gonna cut the yarn and pull it through and then we'll just sew in the, sew in the ends. Do I do any other voices while crafting? I don't know. I think I'm 
In fact, I know I'm terrible. I could do a, like a Lucky Charms, like leprechaun, really offensive, like Irish accent. Like, oh, all me crafts. But I'm pretty sure that anyone who's actually Irish, <laughs> like, would track me down and like give me like extreme physical harm for doing that. All right, let's sew this in. Offensive, please. <laughs> No, I don't want to like offend any. I don't want people to like log on and think that I really think that's how Irish people sound. <laughs> I think there's a tip down in the links down below. <laughs> um, okay. There's kind of pointy edges in there. Um, I could do like a really pseudo. Yeah, link in the bio. Did I not put it there? I thought I did. I wasn't expecting tips, so. <laughs> Let's see. So what I'm doing is I just have this like upholstery needle and I'm just taking the end and then sewing it in. And again, cause this isn't actually gonna get played with cause I don't have children. Um, it doesn't matter so much if you don't tip now. <laughs> <laughs> um, what else could I do? Could I do an, an English accent? Oh, I say, this camping scene is delightful. I think that's terrible. I don't think it's good. All right. Um, I will say that when I moved here to Houston, where's the stinking link? I think it's in the butt. Is it not below? I thought it was down below. I'm sorry. I'm, I tried really hard to get everything ready. <laughs> um, what else? Oh yeah, so when I first moved here, um, I expected everyone in Houston to speak with like a really strong, like, howdy y'all, like, I'm from Texas and this is how I speak which is also offensive. And for those of you who've never been to Houston, Houston's actually, well, A, it's a large city, so any large city is gonna be like metropolitan. Um, but everyone is, like very few people are born and raised in Houston, like percentage-wise. <laughs> um, and so very few people, like no one in Houston has that accent. Even people who grew up here don't have that accent. So here I am, I'm fighting stereotypes about Houston, Texas online. How popular is it to like, I think it's popular like dinosaurs everywhere. Like if you don't like dinosaurs, I don't know what to do with you. We do have a really good, um, I wanna call it the Natural History Museum, but the Museum of Nature and Science, I think is what it's called. Um, it's great, actually. So the science, I guess it's just the science museum. They have this exhibit that the, I think it's like the current president started and they call it the um, Cabinet of Curiosities. And I went to it a couple of months ago and it's amazing. So it's like set, like it's based on these like 18th century, like old aristocrats who used to like just collect a bunch of random stuff from around the world. Religious nut jobs, hate them. Aww. Um, Anyway, so you can go to this like exhibit in the museum and it's just filled with a bunch of stuff from the, old, the museum vaults because they just had storage from all around the city, just like storing like, I got to touch um, a Knight Templar helmet and it's like all stuff that you can like touch. So I have a picture, this is like the door, well again, welcome, I'm a nerd. Like a picture of my hand on a Knight Templar helmet. Um, that was pretty amazing. Um, they had like one of the original, like super old, like remember like those like giant metal, um, like when they first started trying to go down into the ocean, those like giant helmets and they'd like pump it full of oxygen and just like drop them down there and they couldn't even walk cause it was too heavy. Got to touch one of those, like all of these like old fossils. It was super cool. So if you were in Houston and you get a chance to go to the Cabin of Curiosities exhibit, you should absolutely go. And they're going to trade it out like every couple months. 
So it's going to change. Like next time I go, it's going to be totally different stuff. And I'll probably be able to have a picture of myself touching something else equally nerdy. Very cool. That's rather well known. <laughs> it's not untrue. Um, fossil fuels. <laughs> All right. So that's our base for our tent. I'm really regretting this crappy circle I cut now. I think I'm going to redo it. It's actually a drug cartel in Mexico called the Knights Templar Cartel. Do they have a helmet? I'm going to start recut this because that other one was just pathetic. Actually, I wonder if this is even... I wonder if I could like flatten this. Or if there's something... I guess this is fine. Um, I wish I had like something to cut like a good circle, but this will have to do. What else did they have? They had um, fossils of extinct fish you could touch. They had like a bunch of stuff from like Native American tribes from the area. A little farm stand. Oh, thank you. So that farm stand is a, um, that little farm stand was a tea box and I just painted it and then like cut it and then it was super fun. Like that was such a fun project. Actually, that was the one that made me decide to do this because I think I finished that in May and then like end of May was when I started planning for this stream because I was like, um, I love these projects, but like I don't get to, sh like no one sees them. I don't get to share them with anybody. Um, let's see. This is much better. I'm feeling much more comfortable with this circle than that other one. All right. This is one of the European Knights Templar members swear to help the poor and helpless fight against materialism, respect women and children, not kill for money, and not use. So they sell drugs, they just don't use them. <laughs> All right, that's better. No, it's not. It's not still not flat. This is the worst paper bowl circle ever. <laughs> I'm comfortable with that. So, okay, here's what's next. This is where it's gonna, like, that was hard enough. This is where it's gonna actually get tricky. So, we have a couple choices, and y'all let me know what you think. I went on a hike, as one does, and got some sticks, as one does. Um, if you do decide to do something like this and you wanna use sticks, I'm gonna, re like, highly recommend that you bake them, because um, you don't want to bring bugs into your house because they could be totally infested so like i got these i went and got like some pine cones for when our scene is done um and some like bigger stuff i was like oh that'd be a cute little bench for my cute little animals um so if you're gonna bring this into the house just like bake it for 200 degrees for like an hour other good news about doing that is i had several sticks like this baked them all one of them oh this is falling apart one of them leaked sap <laughs> all over like luckily i had it in a cut like on a cut like a cookie sheet with foil down um it was really gross and i'm really glad that i didn't have that uh like just like out and about sitting on my desk like leaking sap all over they won't catch on fire not at 200 degrees so i did get the other thing i got while on my like super nerdy like I'm like walking around like this like little park collecting sticks for my miniatures projects. Um, I also got, where is it? I got a bunch, oh I know where it is, it's right here. I got a bunch of pine cone, or uh, I got a bunch of pine needles. Um, I did not bake these because I was afraid they were gonna catch on fire. So I just stuck them in this baggie and then I put them in the freezer for like a day. Um, and anything that was in here probably died like a slow, horrible death. So that happened. Um, so anyway, so we have sticks that we can use for our teepee. Or I have dowels that we could paint. I think I like the sticks better. What do you think? Or yeah, the sticks, not the dowels. 
These things were like a dollar. I think I got these at the dollar store, literally. But I don't know that I want to use them. Yeah, I'm thinking this is what's gonna happen. Um. <laughs> oh my god, this is gonna be so adorable. I can't even hand, like, I was showing somebody some pictures of my miniature projects earlier, and like she was like exhibiting the same joy that I get from them, um, and it was pretty much great. Wait, did you collect those tiny sticks before you knew which project you were doing? No, I knew that it was gonna be, well, I knew it was gonna be a camp scene, so I knew that I would want, oh, I also got rocks. I got like a bunch of rocks and pebbles. And for those of you who are not from Houston, this might be a big deal. Petrified wood. There's petrified wood all over the Gulf Coast. I had no idea until I moved here. Coming from California, petrified wood is like, that's not just something you just find on a hike. I was really excited about this. More and more witchcraft. Does this look like, this doesn't look like witchcraft, does it? This is wholesome. This is, this is, this isn't witchcraft. <laughs> um, all right, we're doing the sticks. And I think this is, I wanna make sure. So what I'm picturing is poking these things through the crochet, gluing them to the, the back, and then gluing the whole thing down to here. I have no idea if it's gonna work or not. Oh, I just petrified. <laughs> that was good. I'll give you that one. <laughs> Tips for more witchcraft. Um, no. <laughs> Unless you're into that kind of thing, I'm non-judgmental. Like whatever y'all want to believe, like you do you. All right, where's my glue? I don't know. Wait, maybe I should do hot glue. This stuff is for use on metal, glass, plastic, wood, fabric, and more, but it's super smelly and it's also super messy. I might plug in my hot glue gun. I think hot glue is gonna be easier. People want witchcraft. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no witchcraft. All right, let me grab my, I have a hot glue gun somewhere, I can grab it. All right. Ooh, this thing is, um, where should I put this in? If I were an extension cord, let me grab an extension cord. I cleaned my house and so now I don't know where anything is. No, it's not in there. I don't know where it is. Okay. I'm gonna have to do something a little creative with this. Just like adjust the camera angle. Oh, you are an enthusiast. <laughs> I did see that, speaking of Harry Potter, again, if you're not a Harry Potter enthusiast, I apologize. Um, they sell Hermione Granger's wand as a pen now. So if you use a lot of pens at work and you want like a really cool pen, or not at work, if you just use a lot of pens, um, that's an option for you. All right, I'm gonna adjust this. I'm gonna need to ask y'all not to judge my, oh, this is like getting over anyway, my super messy desk over here. It was supposed to be off camera, but I can't get the hot glue gun far enough over. So let me adjust this. Ah. <laughs> that is such, all right. That's not so bad. Really cool pen. Look. Some people are excited about things like pens and Harry Potter and Hermione Granger. Um, and I think that's totally fine. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Is this thing even on? Oh yeah, it's warming up. Okay. 
every single time I go to the craft store, I think that I don't have any of these like miniature glue sticks, and so I buy more. I have probably like like 300 glue sticks. So if anyone in Houston is ever like in an emergency and needs glue sticks on demand, I uh, have some for you. Harry Potter. <laughs> that would be a good cat name. All right, here's some more glue sticks. My cat's name is um, Elizabeth Bennett after the main character in Jane Austen's Pride and Prejudice, as one does. And I was a lit major, and so I need like some ways to express that. Right, is, this, is this working yet? Okay, it is. All right, the moment of truth. More of that poor cat. <laughs> She's fine. My cat is perfectly happy. I get her the good food, and I let her sleep all day. All right. Um, maybe I should like rubber band these together. I think that's probably what needs to happen here. Yeah. All right. Let's get. Um, I bought rubber bands this week, as one does, for an unrelated project, actually. Size 64. I had no idea there were different sizes of rubber bands, but there are. Oh, it smells really bad. <laughs> All right. Okay. Let's do this. Can y'all see this? I mean, like my angle is. Yeah. All right. I think I should do like. Yeah. Um, I used to have a bunch of betta fish as well, speaking of good pet names, and I took a bunch of philosophy classes in college, and so my first cat, my first fish, I named it Voltaire, um, and I can't remember what, I had like a really specific reason from Candide that I, uh, named him that, and Voltaire died, and I had to post like a memorial on Facebook for this stupid betta fish. And so then I got another fish. Is that going to be okay? I think that's not really big enough. Let me go with another size bigger. So then I got another betta, betta fish and I named that one Socrates and then that one died too. Because betta fish from like, and then I looked into it and this wasn't me like killing fish because I was a bad cat owner or a pet owner. It was me getting not great pets from PetSmart. And then also like the things, let's see, <laughs> it's not, it's going to be, it's not a satanic summoning circle. It's an adorable miniature tent. As, let's see, this looks so tacky. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is hilarious. Um. All right. Hey, it worked. I didn't actually think it would work. <laughs> Yay! Okay. All right. So now, <laughs> oh no, it's falling. Okay. Jay Hackett, hello. Um, I hope that you are as excited about making a miniature tent as I am. All right, let's just glue this. Pour salt around it just in case. Um, if you're making a reference to Hocus Pocus right now, I 100% approve. My absolute favorite Halloween movie, Hocus Pocus. I watch it every single Halloween. Um, and I eat my weight in candy corn. All right, so what I'm doing, if you can't see because the angle is not what I intended, I'm sticking the stick through the yarn and then gluing it. All right, 
Sure, that was the reference. Hey! I'm gonna give it to you. Hi! Thanks for the follow! Alright. Alright, so I'm gonna glue this up here. Things. This thing is. <laughs> um, again, I never claimed that this was going to work. I just said this is what we were doing. <laughs> so, I'm going to ask you all not to judge me too hard if this whole thing falls apart. Alright. Ah, string. Is falling apart. Hot, hot. Okay. Judging intensifies. Ah! <laughs> I can't handle the pressure. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh my god, this thing is so hilarious. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh man. All right, let me plug in my iron because I think I'm going to actually get to the tent today, and I didn't know if I was going to. That's exactly what I, <laughs> can you see that? That's exactly, that's exactly how I intended that to look. <laughs> I think it's the rubber band. I think I need to like get rid of the rubber band because it <laughs> looks like garbage. <laughs> okay. I'm going to, I'm gonna attach this thing to this now. Okay, so in the current scene, our little inspiration pick is literally just like sticks stuck in the ground. This is gonna be like movable. <laughs> Delicately movable. <laughs> All right, okay. Here's what I'm thinking we're gonna do. We're gonna get rid of that tacky ass rubber band. I thought it was a good idea. I decided it wasn't. Let's switch to some yarn. I think that's what we're going to do. You see this? <laughs> it does, Mr. Brute, it does have a very like Blair Witch kind of feel now that I'm looking at it. I'm hoping once we get some fabric on it, it doesn't look quite so 1997 horror film. All right, let's get this thing carefully off. Um. Do we get to light this on fire when you're finished? No! It's too- it's- it's not cute right now, but it's gonna be cute and then no one's gonna want to light it on fire. Seven was a good year for it. What else came out in 97? Or just that? That's the only one I remember. What do you do with this one done? Um, what you do with it is you take a bunch of pictures and post the pictures to Pinterest. That's what you do with it when it's done. All right. Um, I considered like, 
Like some people sell their miniature scenes on Jay Oh, ew. Um, some people sell their scenes on, or their like miniature scenes on uh, um, Etsy. I don't know who would want to buy it. I considered doing like giveaways. Like maybe if anyone wants any of this stuff, we could do a giveaway. Blair Witch didn't come out in 97? When did it come out? I could have sworn it was 97. Because I was in middle school. <laughs> Empire Tales Scream 2. How many screams are there now? There's probably like 18. No. Last thing I need to do is like vomit on uh, <laughs> on like live internet. <laughs> hey Lindsay, um, I saw your first stream. You puked. <laughs> All right. I'm trying to decide if I want like a bow in this or if I'm gonna cover the whole thing up. I think I might just cover the whole thing up, so I'm just gonna put a knot. And then cut it and glue it. Tips for puke. Oh my god, no. <laughs> I told you, wholesome. This isn't that kind of sight. <laughs> That looks better. I think I think it was the rubber band that made it look creepy. That's better. Alright. Blue this. Just so that this thing will not completely fall apart. Okay. If y'all can hear the song. There's something in the background of it that sounds just like a phone vibrating. That's very distracting. I will never use this song again. What song is this? Yeah, that's way too distracting. All right. Very cute. Oh no. Wholesome puke for tips. <laughs> I mean, it's alcohol free puke, so it's kind of wholesome, I guess. Let's see. That's not the song, it's your dresser drawer. <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> Do you guys hear that? It sounds like vibrating. I don't know what it is. <laughs> Alright. Back to the original angle that I intended. There we go. Alright. Yes, so that's the song, and then the artist is Pretty La La. So yeah, that's what I was saying earlier. I went online and I found a bunch of music that's all, um, like royalty free. And so, like, so, and most of it's just these like indie artists who are trying to make it, and it's kind of fun. Wow, that's really high. Oh no. <laughs> that's a really inconvenient height. All right. Here's a demonstration of the stand to sit functionality of this desk. Um, oh, but now, oh well, whatever. Um, okay, so we're gonna do rough translate to turn a ball. Maybe. Um, I didn't actually, oh, that's a good point. I probably should have looked up like what the lyrics meant before I uh, endorsed it on my stream. All right, so now we're gonna do the tent fabric. I'm gonna need more hot glue, so I'm gonna put this back in. Okay. Um, iron this. 
this because it's very wrinkly. Look at this tank, I know. Um, this is the most domestic I have behaved in probably about six months. Um, I'm not a big fan of ironing. Oh yeah, this thing is like, yeah, there we go. Translate reading lyrics for stream. <laughs> I did start a checklist actually. So as, no, oh, shh. As, oh God. Yeah, she's not a poor cat. She's the worst cat, by the way. Oh, I'm sorry. I take it back. Um, I did make a checklist because there's so much that goes into the, like having a stream that I never realized. And so now if anyone out there wants my checklist, I will email it to you so you too can be pre extra prepared for your first stream. All right. Ironed. Purple Academy. <laughs> Shh, that wasn't abuse. I hope. Um, actually, so I adopted her from this like super hippie liberal no kill shelter in Denver, Colorado, and I think they had to come to a house visit. Like they had to do background check. I had to give two references, one of whom was my manager. So they had to call my boss at the time to ask my boss if I was responsible enough to own a grumpy old nine-year-old cat. What's ours cat? <laughs> Worst. I should change her name. I sh okay, next time I take her to the vet, I'm going to tell her that. I'm going to tell them that her name is Worst. And they would agree with me because last time I took her to the vet, they had to sedate her just to like palpate her stomach or whatever it was they were doing. How can you acknowledge a cat without instantly holding up in front of the webcam? Ooh, no, 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 Mr. Brute. Um, Elizabeth Bennett does not like being picked up and she reacts accordingly. <laughs> Stand up. You guys want to see someone get attacked by a cat on live internet? <laughs> All right, this will be our lining. Yes. <laughs> oh my God. Lindsay. She's probably super, oh, come here. Hi, you wanna, come here. Yeah. This is Elizabeth Bennett, the grumpiest cat in all of Texas. Um, she hates being picked up. So when she wakes me up at four in the morning, I force cuddle her. Ah, get your, ow. I force cuddle her because she hates it. But I hate, <laughs> I hate uh, being woken up at 4 a.m. <laughs> I walked in, Mr. Brute, I walked into the shelter and this is like Lindsay age, I think I was 22. And I really wanted to make like a positive influence on the world. And so I <laughs> walked into the shelter and I said, I want to adopt a cat that, because I'd read an article that like black cats get adopted around Halloween and then they get like tortured or something. I don't know. Um, and so I was convinced that I was going to save a black cat from like utter destruction. And I said, I want a black cat that no one else is going to adopt. And they said, okay, um, there's your cat. And she was in a cage by herself on the ground. <laughs> and I was like, oh, hi, kitty. And she's like, <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah, I really want her. And the rest is history. All right, Matt back, force cuddle. <laughs> All right. So this is dry now. Let me grab my cutters.
paid for a good force cuddling once. <laughs> oh. Um. Yeah, no comment. <laughs> All right. Rotary cutters. Those of you who are not quilters or just crafters, this is called a rotary cutter. It's pretty awesome. Um, if you're gonna cut things and you want it to be somewhat straight. Where did my, okay, I'm sorry. There's like something on my shirt bothering me. See, and now the cat went away because I force cuddled her and she was like, I've had enough. I've heard that Halloween adoption story before. It's close to impossible to hear what they're being. Yes, yeah. Um, in fact, I've had two friends who found cats just like abandoned outside their house in downtown Houston and they both like grabbed them to be saved because no cat's gonna live in summer in downtown Houston. I've also heard, and then again, this is super, I don't know if this is actually true, but I've heard that just because of like internalized racism, black animals are less likely to get adopted anyway. So I am glad I got a black cat. And I am glad that she's not being tortured for Halloween. And I'm the only one being tortured by her at like 4 a.m. So I feel pretty good about that. That's like a positive thing that has come out of my existence on this planet. All right. So when you're using these rotary cutters, like you get the mat, if y'all can see this. Yeah, let me scoot this over. And then you use like your clear acrylic ruler and then you can just like somewhat line it up. And then these things are super sharp. And you just take it along the ruler and then it's a nice, cut, nice straight cut. Um, so yeah, so I went to the I didn't have a car at the time, um, and so I walked down to this animal shelter, and I said, yes, I would like that fat black cat that's really mean, um, and I would like to take it with me right now, please. And so then I went through, like, the background check, and then I had to come back. Like, there was an interview process or something. Um, move this up a little bit more. There we go. Um, and I had to carry, she was, like, 14 pounds at the time or something. I think she was 14. And I had to carry her two miles back to my house in a cardboard box. They just like literally were like, here's a box. And it had a handle on top, but she was so heavy, she like pulled the bottom out. <laughs> and so here's like little 22 year old Lindsay. Shh, I'm telling your birth story. Like walking down the streets of Denver <laughs> with this cat who's pissed, like scrabbling around inside this box, falling out of the bottom. And so I like have my arms underneath and it's like, like this major like curling workout. All right, how tall is this thing? This thing is it's five inches. I'm trying to decide if I want to make this look so you see in like the, I don't know if you can see it, in like the inspiration pick. It's just like raw edges. I'm trying to decide if I want to like fold the edges under and make it look a little better. Bethany wrapping the cat up in a cardboard box. Yes. <laughs> I've also asked numerous people, I'm like, hey, if you want a cat, I got one. And they've all met her and they're like, no, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> they also told me she was nine and I got her in 2009 so I assumed that she was born in 2000 which would mean that she's like 17 18 now and she does not act like an 18 year old cat so I'm somewhat convinced that they lied to me and they really just wanted her to get adopted because <laughs> I like walked in and said hi I'm looking for a senior citizen cat and they were like oh this cat's almost 10 and I was like okay perfect 10 years later, she's like, I think she's gonna last another 10 years. One, two, three, four, five, let's do six. Hmm. 
Yeah, I think I'm gonna have a raw edge along the bottom and I'll just fold over the top for those of you following along at home. All right. Oh, that'll be super cute. Yeah. Oh no, okay. Can you see that? You can't see it, sorry, I'm in the wrong place. <laughs> and there we go, our miniature camping scene. Thanks for joining. Just kidding. That's terrible. Okay. Um, I'm do the same thing with my yellow. Actually, I'm going to do the yellow a little bit longer. I think I'll do this one six and a half inches so it sticks up a little bit. Four, five, six and a half. Alright. Don't stop living your life now. It's really loud. Does it sound loud to you guys? They are loud. Don't stop living your life now. Alright. is done. So now, what I'm thinking I'm going to do is this will be the outside, this will be the inside. This will be folded down a little bit so it'll stick out a little bit. And then I'll just glue them, to, like stitch them together maybe really quickly. Just do like a running stitch. So you can do like a, for those of you who are not yarn enthusiasts, um, you can do a running stitch and then just use it to like pull it and make like a drawstring basically. Standard seam allowance is generally a quarter inch, but I don't care, so I'm doing more. You're warm, right? No, I'll turn off. Why don't you turn off? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I'm turning this under, so it'll be like nice and pretty up on top. And then I'll turn this one under a little bit less. Depends on if it's like right before an interview and you're getting like super jittery and really excited. That'd probably be the only time there's too much. I do drink a lot of coffee though. So I went on like a health kick a couple years ago and I like, you know, stopped eating sugar and I stopped eating carbs and I stopped eating, like I like cut all this like wonderful stuff out of my diet. Like I stopped drinking alcohol for a year, like, and I was like, I'll be damned if I give up coffee too. Like, I'm not doing it. Like, I've had to give up a lot in this world. I'm not giving up coffee. Okay, I'm liking it. I'm digging this. Um, where did my tent go? There it is. So that's what that's gonna look like. Actually, I wonder if I should just do it like that. 
That'd be cute, actually. That might be what I do. I might just, what do you think? Just attach it up there and then make the doors open like that. See? Yeah, I knew it'd be dark in there. That's what we're gonna do. That was way too short. Um, I would agree. So anytime I go on vacation or like visit a new neighborhood or a new city, I always go to like check out the uh, coffee shops in the neighborhood. That's like my thing. All right. I'm going to, I don't want to do this. What you guys are watching is indecision at work. I think I am just going to do that. So now I need to cut this stuff. So, you guys can't see it, yeah. So what I'm thinking I'm gonna do is cut here, just so I leave the flap and then I can fold that back. So I'll cut that afterwards. Right now I'm just gonna cut along here. I wonder if I should glue it for, no, but I'm not gonna. Hmm, no, I think I will. I'm gonna attach this. Let's live, let's do it. I'm going to shorten my yellow just a little bit because it's too long. I'm living. I'm cutting, speaking of living a little, I'm cutting with scissors. This is not straight. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Okay. Right. There we go. Perfect. I feel very comfortable with my choices so far. And now, here's my hot glue gun. Scoops this up. Oof. Okay. So, Mr. Brute, you drink your coffee black. I used to put like a ton of sugar and milk in, and now I'm down to like just a little bit of whole milk or almond milk. But at one point I was a sugar and milk, like a ton of sugar and milk enthusiast actually. I'm just gonna put a dot of glue here. So the good thing about hot glue over that other glue I was thinking about for this, that like fabric glue I had, there you go, is it soaks into, like it's really not that good for fabric. It like shows, it shows through and then you can't see it. Or you can see it. All right, so now I'm going to get rid of this again. I'm not as black as my soul. Oh. It's a terrible joke. <laughs> you can't have anything added to it. I do just a little bit of milk. I tried a new, there's a new coffee shop near me and I asked for almond milk in it. And so like, if this is my cup of coffee, here, this is my cup of coffee. They made it like this much coffee, this much almond milk. And it was pretty much the most watered down thing I had ever tasted. I was like, this doesn't even taste like coffee. It just tastes like sugar. Um, I'm willing to give them another try because it was like their first week being open and maybe like the barista was just very nervous by like my request. So I'm going to give them another try, but yeah, um, but I'm not like holding out hope that it's going to get significantly better. Let's see. All right, I'm cutting here. And then I'm going to 
cut around the back. Y'all probably won't be able to see this because I'm right-handed and this thing is awkward. Actually, what if I come around this side? I'll do this. All right, cut down. I hope that was okay. Oh yeah, I'm okay with this. I'm gonna glue this thing here. No, you're fine. All right, so now I'm going to, <laughs> this is, <laughs> it's not really looking like a tent so far, but I'm sure it will. Let's see. Did you enter the store saying, hi y'all? Give me one pumpkin spice. Hi y'all, can I get a PSL up in here? No, I didn't do that. <laughs> I have ordered a pumpkin spice latte. I have ordered a chai tea latte. Um, and now it seems like Starbucks is like on this kick where they're just like making up random crap. They're like, oh, it's a unicorn frappe. Oh, it's a mixed berry frappe. Oh, it's a, and then they sell it for like a limited amount of time just to like try to like build buzz. And I refuse to be buzzed. I don't know what that means. <laughs> All right. Just cut, cut around here. Oh my God, why is that? It's very close minded of you. Um, I do think it's funny that people think that there's like actually pumpkin in the PSL for calling it the PSL, the pumpkin spice latte, there's, that's not pumpkin. That's like pumpkin flavoring. Because that's how fast food works. They give you something that tastes nice that has no actual food in it. Okay. My little hem is showing. All right. It's looking more like a teepee. I'm, I'm, less nervous now than I was about five seconds ago. What do you think? That's cute, right? This, this stuff needs to be trimmed still, but... I think I'm going to trim this. Is this one? Two things. We aren't calling it a PSL at two. There's no what PSL. There's no pumpkin in that. It's like all pumpkin flavoring. In the pumpkin spice latte. Alright, this is In fact, yeah, so there's this like online person, science babe or something. And she did like this big expose and was like super outraged that there was no pumpkin in it. And I think she thought people would stop buying Starbucks because of it. Um, her mistake because people just like things that taste good, like I was saying. All right, I'm, I'm taking this all the way around. This is happening. There's no going back. Aw. And you guys doubted me. You said it looked like witchcraft. Future iterations, you could crochet your rings to be red, orange, and yellow to look like fire. Ew, Mr. Brute, that's gross. <laughs> That's so gross. Um, well, so I might do something like that for the fire. I do have, okay, this is, it was going to be a surprise. I was saving it for a special occasion, but I might just break it out now. Where's my, where's my stuff? Shh. Look at this. I paid for this. It's a tiny little camp. It's a camp stove. I was gonna hang it inside or like place it inside somewhere. 
And then I think what I might do, I have some green ribbon over here. Lizzie, you're fine. I have some green ribbon that matches my other fabric. Yay! We're making much better progress than I thought we would. I literally thought I wouldn't get past the crocheted rings. Uh-oh. This could be like one of those opening videos. Hey guys, check out my new Jim Holtz ideology mini lantern. I'm really excited to open it up with all y'all. Oh my God, my parents are gonna be really ashamed. I'm really excited to open it up with everybody. Um, the packaging is really great. Um, it's plastic, there's a cardboard back. Um, there's a warning that I'm not supposed to mix old and new batteries. Do you ever consider using raw grain leather and animal belts for this project? <laughs> no. Look at, okay, animal bones for a scene for tiny animals, that's offensive on so many levels. These guys are so cute. I can't get over it. Okay. Um, I don't know what this is. This really is, I didn't realize I was gonna have to like do electron, oh, there's no batteries. Frick. How do you get this open? Oh. 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 Okay, so this was in here telling me which direction to put the batteries and then it fell out. I don't know which. Um, my review of the Jim Holtz Ideology Mini Lantern is about to take a dark turn because this is not going great. <laughs> hmm. I do have batteries. I don't know how this thing works. This seems like dangerous. And I have very bad luck, just in general. I don't know how great this is gonna go. My little buffalo. <laughs> well, this campfire can also incorporate a leather tanning rack and a jerky station. <laughs> No, but if I get really ambitious, I'll make some fishing scenes for, or some tiny fish for my kayak. It's like, that's what people do when they go camping, right? All right. I'm not loving this. This is not great. Not great, guys. Pretty disappointed. Jim Holtz, I expected better. I think that says Jim. Tim, Tim Holtz, I expected better. Um, yeah, I think, actually, yeah, would even fish be offensive? Fish, even hot dogs might be offensive for these tiny animals. They probably need a vegetarian uh, camping meal. Oh, this iron is still on. Let me not burn this house down. That's not what I do when I go camping. <laughs> um, well... Smoking weed and playing guitar is not what this family is about, okay? Look at this little guy. He wants to go fishing. He wants to have a wholesome... I'm disappointed in this. I don't know what to do about that. He's going to have a wholesome camping trip. Okay. Where's my green ribbon? Here it is. And another opening video. Hey guys, opening my celebrated tempo ribbon. I'm having a hard time with it. Where's my... This is... I need... <laughs> Welcome to my life. This is, this is pretty much a preview of my life every day. Aha, it's working. That's also a preview of my life. It generally works out. Okay. So, I think I'm gonna get some buttons and like tie this back along that and along that. Ooh, this is really long. Hmm, I might need to, I might need to trim it. I need to 
to trim it some more. thrilled with this angle, I'll be honest. It's like, look how much flap that is. Somebody, whoever cut this wasn't paying attention. The other side looks fine though, it's about the same size. I don't know why this looks so weird. Alright, I do have some lace. This is going to be a very feminine camping site. Because it needs something to cover it up. Let's see. Because somebody didn't plan ahead when she put the glue on the sticks. I guess that looks fine. I wonder if I could just... Ooh, I'll roll it. Okay, problem solved. Don't worry, guys. I got it. That was close. Um, this is, like, stretchy. Yeah, I like that. And then what I'll do is put some in there. Awesome. It's all working out. Everything's coming up millhouse. Okay. Ooh, or I could make it vertical like this. I think that's what I'm gonna do. And make it uh huh. There we go. Done. Love it. See, I told you all I didn't have a plan. This is just coming together beautifully. I'm going to glue this. I'm out of glue. Anyway. All right, so now, y'all can't see this, sorry. My hot glue gun. Um, I will add to my checklist to find an extension cord before the stream. I'm gonna glue this so it. <laughs> That's so hot! <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> In local news, local streamer Lindsay Aarons was rushed to an emergency room with a fatal hot glue gun accident. <laughs> All right. That's, aw, yeah, that's good. Okay. Let's see. So. Now we have a very cutesy lined, oh my god, that's adorable. In like a very old lady kind of way. Kind of my vibe, you might have noticed. Um, sorry, I'm gonna take this off camera. Get some glue on here. Blue gun is really hot. That's hotter than usual. Um, I took a guitar class. I got a guitar from my graduation gift from high school. And I, like, rather than wait until my fingertips would get used to the guitar strings, I would put hot glue on my fingertips to, like, just use that to practice. And that was fine. Maybe I was a lot tougher then, but this is extremely hot hot glue. Victorian teepee. Did I cuss? Guys, I was doing research into what not to do on streams and they said not to cuss because it's alienating. And that's kind of a problem for me because every other word out of my mouth is the F word. So I'm trying really hard right now. All right. No drinking. <laughs> oh my God. Could you imagine? <laughs> that would be 
a hilarious drinking game. Actually, just with my life, just anytime anything ridiculous happens, and you would just be 24-7 wasted. <laughs> <laughs> no, guys, your livers. No, you're not allowed. I don't, I'm not going to let you do it. I'm not going to let my mistakes and my clumsiness be the death of you. Aww. It's hot. Frick. They probably make like heat gloves or something. <laughs> Not to worry. Okay. Okay. Jeez. Oh my god. Hey, Lindsay, what'd you do this weekend? Oh, I burned the shit out of my hands making a fabric teepee. <laughs> Every time we look at the Victorian teepee, we'll sober up. <laughs> hey, it's not that... Um, it is a little... It is a little... Something. I'm gonna roll it on this side, I think. Drink every time Oh no, again, I'm, I'm working on it. I don't want to alienate anyone. I want everyone to feel comfortable here being themselves. I'm gonna try really hard not to cuss because that's what the internet told me to do. And Mr. Brute told me that it, I should just Google it and then believe anybody who writes anything. TP I ever saw. <laughs> it's not that bad, right? I think it's gonna get better. I think actually I'm not gonna do the extra lace on top. The Victorian representation of a vagina. I think you should think about what you just said. I'm terrible at bows. Like really bad at bows. I think you have to be more coordinated. I'm the most, like least coordinated person in North America. So this is, this is getting out of my comfort zone here. And now she's not. Yeah, Poops McGee. To everyone that says vagina hacking. Um, I do know a new word I'll add to my auto filter list though. Thanks. And I was talking to somebody and they were like, just add every word that might offend you. And I was like, I don't want to do that preemptively. Like, I want to assume that people are good and decent and kind and that they won't like pepper my space with like profanity or like racism. And they were like, Lindsay, it's the internet. Like, your idealism and your optimism have no place here. Um, but I didn't do it. I did not add those words to the list, obviously. Um, my optimism is not being rewarded, but, you know, we do what we can. This is not a great... MySpace? Who said anything about MySpace? I didn't say anything about MySpace, did I? Oh, MySpace, like MySpace in the universe. MySpace here, you were in MySpace. Not MySpace, not MySpace. MySpace. Um. Oh my God. <laughs> I have many regrets in this life and this bow is one of them. Actually, it's not true. I don't have that many regrets. Things have turned out okay. I made the best decisions I could at the time with the information I had. Does the word vagina offend you? You make a terrible, I would make a terrible feminist. I guess you're right. I don't know if I would add that to my list of words that offend me. It's anatomically correct. Um,
And I guess you were using it in reference to like this amazing, beautiful art I'm making. Maybe this is this is a statement piece about. Ooh, I got it. Okay, okay, I got it. It is a representation of a vagina. And it's to make a statement about how um, outdoor sports are marketed towards men. And um, I think it's offensive. So I'm, I'm going to go write an article about it on Jezebel. And y'all can read about it. That's what this is. It's not true. This is just an ugly tent. Okay. Um, so I was an English major. And when you are an English major... you learn how to make literally any argument. You don't have to believe in the argument. You just have to make any evidence point to any outcome. And that's what you learn how to do in college if you're a literature major. No one owes you an apology. So should I massage them? Is that right? <laughs> Couldn't hurt. Oh <laughs> All right. I might just glue this and call it good. I was thinking about like getting really clever with it and like putting like little buttons over here and then tying it back, but I think it might be Actually, maybe I'll just do that. Here we go. Let me move this. All right, there we go. Okay, so that's better. It's a little more balanced. I think I'm just going to glue it for now, and then I'm going to consider adding tips for bow massage. Um, Poops me, there are entire websites dedicated to that kind of content, if you're looking for it. I bet if you just Google bow massage, hey, uh, Mr. Brute, Google it. Um, see if there's <laughs> bow massage fetishists. <laughs> you guys are ruining my wholesome stream. <laughs> All right. I'm just glu I'm gluing it. I'm I've made a executive decision. This is happening. I'm so do have like a miniature ceremonial piece pipe. <laughs> It'll be a bunch of kids sitting here in a circle, just yeah, passing the pipe, puff and pass, right? <laughs> I think it's gonna be great. Here's what I think. I think I'm gonna glue the outside. And then I'm gonna glue it to the circle. And I think it's gonna be great. And then when it gets in the scene, I don't know what I'm gonna do with this thing. I'm pretty disappointed in this thing. I don't know if I care to go get, should I go get batteries for this and see if it even works? Episode three, <laughs> peyote. excited about this. Is that how you spell peyote? I don't think that's how you spell peyote. <laughs> you brought this curtain. Um, fun fact. Actually, two fun facts. One, normally when people say fun fact, it's not a fun fact. It's the opposite of a fun fact. Number two, this, this is the opposite of a fun fact. Um, I studied Jane Austen under a radical feminist scholar. Speaking of Jane Austen and Elizabeth Bennet, and Jane Austen had a bunch of dirty jokes hidden throughout her books, if you read with an eye for like dirty jokes. And so in Persuasion, which Bridget Jones' Diary book two or whatever is like based on, there's a reference to well-hung curtains. And those well-hung curtains are placed very strategically near our hero, if you know what I mean. Um, so Colonel Fitzwilliam, I think it's his name, he's Colonel Fitzwilliam. These are, that's what I paid for in college, by the way. Like some people learn, like go to college and they pay to like learn how to do things that they'll make lots of money with their entire life. 
I learned to go how to, to like learn how to recognize dirty jokes in romantic literature. And I don't mean romantic, like romantic, like romance. I mean, romantic era. That's what I paid for. And a lot of money too, by the way. I do have some regrets. I take back what I said earlier. How many times do you think she'll say, should I grab batteries for this and see if it works? Well, I'm really disappointed. I had high hopes for this thing. I thought this was going to be like the piece de la resistance. Is that how you pronounce that? I'm terrible with French. That's one accent I can't do. And I've had numerous people make fun of my French. Pronunciation of words. Yeah. Okay. <gasps> oh no! There's been another terrible hot glue accident. Somebody glued her tent to the mat. Crap. Crap. No. All right, it's all right, guys. It's all right. Your French is amazing. P.S. de la resistance. Is that it? P.S. de resistance? I think that's what it is. Can you say coupe d'etat? Coupe, 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 coup d'etat. That's it? Coup d'etat. Happens all the time. for tips. <laughs> hey, make a fool of yourself on the internet for tips. I don't, I don't want to play that game. All right. I like it. I'm going with it. I'll figure this thing out next time. I don't. Maybe I'll just take it back. Because it seems like it's well lit enough, right? Y'all see? Look at this. I have like a swivel. that. It's kind of dark. You can't really see it. I need more lighting. Yeah, great. Okay. It's a... <laughs> it has a lot of personality, which is true of most things I do. People say, well, you're good at trying, and it has a lot of personality. So I, um, I'm going with it. It's done. Do the animals have names? They do. So if you go on, Google it, uh, Calico Critters website, um, each of these guys has a little name. I don't know it. They all have backstories, too. Like, the different, like, they all have hobbies and interests, and you can, like, learn all about them. I did not memorize that because that seemed like, remember how I was talking about how I was kind of embarrassed of being a grown ass woman playing with dolls. Uh, that seemed like too much. That seemed too far. Name them for, t that's a good idea. No, cause you guys would give them names like vagina flaps. Like, no, I don't need that. <laughs> <laughs> all right cool so next time i think we're wrapping up next time let's do the campfire i need tips for what to eat for supper um miniature hot dogs all the way how much i got a tip to name one of them critters Are you going to give it a good name or the kind of name I assume you're going to give it? Get the battery. <laughs> I will not forget the batteries. Next time we'll set this up. Okay, next time we'll set this thing up. Somehow we'll hang this from in here. I'll figure that out and then uh, we'll do a little campfire with our tea light. Thanks, Mr. Brute. Thanks, guys.
And yeah, so I'm planning on doing this again next Sunday. I might try to flip or fit some more in during the week, um, but I work full time, so it might be hard. Otherwise, I'll see y'all same time next Sunday. Thanks, guys. It's been really fun. Comes the sunset, and we will in the sunset.